Good evening, everybody. Um, could somebody in chat tell me if the sound levels are good? Welcome to the quiz. We will be starting in about five minutes.
Good evening everybody and welcome to Board in the City, the big quiz number seven. Thank you all for joining and let's have a good evening. So, the quiz is free but if you do feel like donating to Board in the City, there is the link paypal.me backslash board in the city kick. Um, it will help us get through these hard times. Um, just like to say a quick thank you to everybody out there, all the key workers, everybody's still working through these times, trying to get us all back to as normal as possible. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the sections today. So round one, general knowledge. Round two is the odd one out round. Round three is the cheese and wine round. And then we will have a break. Round four is the 1990s. Round five uh, is Eurovision. Round six is football strips. That is the picture round. Then we'll have another break. And then we'll have round seven, which is birds. And round eight, which is space, the final frontier. Okay, we'll uh, I'll wait one minute uh, for any stragglers, and then we'll get on with the first round. Okay, the general knowledge round. Question 1. What was first introduced by Liberty Bell in October 1969? Question 1. What was first introduced by Liberty Bell in October 1969? Question 2. The Yardbirds had three famous lead guitarists. Name them. You will get a point for each. Question 3. By what name is the marsupial Sarcophilus harisi better known? By what name is the marsupial Sarcophilus harisi better known? 
Question 4. What does the MP stand for in MP3 or MPEG or MP4 for, for that matter? The questions are on the screen. Gracie's world. You can still read them. I'll give you a few seconds to uh, go through the answers and then we'll look at the next set of questions. So, question one. What was first introduced by Liberty Bell in October 1969? Question two. The Yardbirds had three famous lead guitarists. Name them. Question three. By what name is the marsupial Sarcophilus harisi better known? And question four. What does the MP stand for in MP3 or MPEG? Okay, let's go on to the next set of questions. Question 5. Who performed the title music for the Bond films A. Octopussy B. Thunderball and C. Quantum of Solace So you're looking for three different acts that performed the title music for for these Bond films. Octopussy, Thunderball, Quantum of Solace. Question 6 whose birthday is celebrated around the globe on January 25th. Whose birthday is celebrated around the globe on January 25th? Question 7. What numeric term describes perfect vision and a form of cricket? And last question in the round. Which chain of restaurants is named after a character in Moby Dick? So, question five. Who performed the title music for the Bond films? A. Octopussy. B. Thunderball. And C. Quantum of Solace. Question six. Whose birthday is celebrated around the globe on January 25th? Question seven. What numeric term describes perfect perfect vision and a form of cricket? And question eight, which chain of restaurants is named after a character in Moby Dick? Um, question eight, restaurant is probably pushing it a little bit. A chain of eateries. Which chain of eateries is named after a character in Moby Dick? I wouldn't actually call them a restaurant. Okay, anybody need me to repeat any questions? Go back to the first set of questions. Okay, so let's go on to the answers for the general knowledge round. What was first introduced by Liberty Bell in October 1969? It was Monty Python's Flying Circus. It is the introducing theme tune. The Yardbirds had three famous guitarists. They were Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page. By what name is the marsupial Sarcophilus cerisi better known as? It is the Tasmanian Devil. And question four, what does the MP stand for in MP3 or MPEG? 
It is moving picture. So, one, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Two, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page. Three, The Tasmanian Devil. And four, Moving Picture. Okay, who performed the title music for these Bond films? A. Octopussy. That was Rita Coolidge. B. Thunderball. That was Tom Jones. And C. Quantum of Solace. That was Jack White and Alicia Keys. If you've got either of Jack White or Alicia Keys, you will get a point. Question 6. Whose birthday is celebrated around the globe on the 25th? It's Robert Burns. Ravi Burns. Burns Night. What numeric term describes perfect vision and a form of cricket? It is 2020. And the name of the character in Moby Dick is Starbucks. So, question 5. The answers are A. Rita Coolidge. B. Tom Jones. C. Jack White or Alicia Keys. 6. Is Robert Burns on Burns Night. 7 is 2020, and 8 is Starbucks. Like I said, not really a restaurant, but as close as damn it. Okay, so throw your scores in the chat. 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. When 3 out of 12? Maybe? Emus can't fly. <laughs> Four. Thank you, Eleanor. <laughs> there was 12 points up for grabs. One each for the Octopussy Thunderball and Quantum of Solace. And one each on the first lot as well for the guitarists. Anybody better than three or four? Anybody gonna throw their scores in the in the ring? Okay, let's move on to the next round. The next round is odd one out. So one of the things you'll see on the screen is not like the others. Can you pick them out? Okay, let's start. Number one. Springer. Clumber. Bedlington. Cocker. Yep, you get a point each for the Yardbirds. It's not all, you know. I'm not that. I'm not going to give three answers for one point. It's one point each for the three guitarists. Question two. The Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Which one is the odd one out? Question three. Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. And question four, help, let it be, revolver, and rubber soul. So, which one's the odd one out? In one, Springer, Clumber, Bedlington, Cocker. Question two, the Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn, Staten Island. Question three, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. And for help, let it be Revolver, Rubber Soul. <laughs> Emus are planted in the ground. Well, I'm sure that would make it hard to fly.
Okay, so let's move on to the next set. So number five, A All Saints, B Bank, C Peckham, D Cock Fosters. Question six, Danish Blue, Stilton, Roquefort, and Gorgonzola. Question seven, Waltz, India, Tango, Lima. And question eight, Hades, Zeus, Poseidon, and Apollo. So, question five, which one's the odd one out out of All Saints, Bank, Peckham, and Cock Fosters? Question six, Danish Blue, Stilton, Rockfort, and Gorgonzola. Question seven, Waltz, India, Tango, and Lima. And question eight, Hades, Zeus, Poseidon, and Apollo. Which one's the odd one out? Okay. Anybody need any more time? Anybody want me to go back to the first ones? Or... If not, let's get on with the answers. Okay. So, so the odd one out for question one was the Bedlington C Bedlington. It is a terrier. The rest are spaniels. Question two: the odd one out is Harlem. It is a neighbourhood of New York City. Um, the others are suburbs, I believe, or something else. Can't remember off the top of my head. C is Venus. It is the only one of those planets that doesn't have a moon. And question four, the odd one out is Let It Be. It was produced in the 70s, where the other three were all released in the 60s. Okay, so... Next set, five, which is the odd one out. The odd one out is Peckham. All the rest of them are tube stations. Question six, which is the odd one out. It's Rockfort. It is a sheep's cheese, I believe, or a goat's cheese, where the others are normal cheese from a cow. Um, a is the answer to seven waltz it is whiskey in the phonetic alphabet india tango lima w should be whiskey not waltz and eight is apollo hades zeus and poseidon are greek gods and apollo is the person rocky fights in rocky one and two and oh, no, he's actually a roman god um so Price scores in chat. How did you get on? We may have had a slight disconnection there, people. Apologies for that. Did everybody get all the answers? Um, so do I need to go back and answer the first four again, or did everybody see them? It seem we dropped off the internet for a second there, or two. Is everybody back? Anybody in chat? Oh, 
Is anybody there? Hello? This is the risks of live television, people. This is the risks. Okay, we will take a small break and I'll try and find out if anybody is still listening. Okay, seems like we're back in the room. Okay, so let's go on to round three, which is the cheese and wine round, which is one of my favorite rounds. Love cheese, love wine. Oh, so question one. From which country does Jarlberg originate? Jarlsberg? Jarlberg? Originate. Which country? Quickly, it's a cheese. Question two. What is the name of the enzyme used in most hard cheese production? Question three. What is the minimum aging for vintage champagne? Question four. What fruit is the classic aroma expected of a Cabernet Sauvignon? So, question one. From which country does Jarlsberg originate? Question two. What is the name of the enzyme used in most hard cheese production? Question three. What is the minimum aging for vintage champagne? And question four. What fruit is the classic aroma expected of a Cabernet Sauvignon? Okay, so moving on to question five. Which German wine shares its name with a joint of ham? Question five. Which German wine shares its name with a joint of ham? Question six. Which cheese revived Wallace in the movie Curse of the Were Rabbit? Question 7. What spirit is added to wine to make port? And question 8. How does double Gloucester differ from single Gloucester? So question 5. Which German wine shares its name with a joint of ham? Question 6. Which cheese revived Wallace in the movie Curse of the Were Rabbit? Question 7. What spirit is added to wine to make port? And question 8. How does double Gloucester differ from single Gloucester? Okay, 
give you a few seconds to get your scribblings down. And let's look at the answers. Okay. Question one. From which country does Jarlsberg originate? It originates from Norway. What is the name of the enzyme used in most hard cheese production? The enzyme is called rennet. What is the minimum aging for vintage champagne? It is only three years. And what fruit is the classic aroma expected of a Cabernet Sauvignon? It is black currant. So answer one, Norway, two, Rennet, three, three years, or black currant. Okay. Let's move on to the other four questions. Question five, which German wine shares its name with a joint of ham? That is Hock. Which cheese revived Wallace in the movie Curse of the Were Rabbit? That was Stinking Bishop. Uh, question seven, what spirit is added to wine to make port? That is brandy. Brandy is added to wine. And question eight. How does double Gloucester different, differ from single Gloucester? Well, double Gloucester is twice as big. That is the only difference. So, question five. Hock, six. Stinking Bishop, seven. Brandy, eight. It is twice as big. Double Gloucester is is twice as big okay so how did you get on throw your answers not your answers your scores in the chat zero out of eight congratulations gracie's world three okay pretty good well better than Zero, anyway. What well about Eleanor? Any more? Any more? And <laughs> we will take a quick break, and hopefully the questions will get easier for everyone after we come back.
Okay. Okay, well, I'm hoping we're back. It looks like our internet is going up and down. Oh, we're getting some anomaly with the computer. Um, but at the moment, it looks like everybody's back. So I'm going to crack on with round four before we lose you all again. Okay, I'm going to give it a few seconds because it looks like we have three or four people that have dropped off. Thank you, Gracie's World. Um, oh, we've got a couple back. Going to wait for all eight. We're all coming back. Round four is the 1990s. Hopefully everybody's here that wants to carry on. We are now back up to everybody that was here previously. So, round four. If anybody needs me to go back and uh, ask some questions, then... So, round four is the 1990s. Number one. Originally founded in 1995, what does the E in eBay stand for? Question one. Originally founded in 1995, what does the E in eBay stand for? Question two. Which former footballer claimed to be the son of God in 1991? Which former footballer claimed to be the son of God in 1991? Ah, oh, good times, the 90s. And question three. Terry Waite was released in November 1991. How many days had he been held captive? I will give you the point if you can get within a hundred. So, question one. Originally founded in 1995... What does the E in eBay stand for? Question two. Which former footballer claimed to be the son of God in 1991? Terry Waite was released in November 1991. But how many days had he been held captive? You need to get within 100 to score the point. Okay. Question four. Which Blue Peter presenter was sacked in 1998 over newspaper reports of drug use? Can't do that with sticky back plastic. Which Blue Peter presenter was sacked in 1998 over newspaper reports of drug use? Question five. What did the Indian government change the name of Bombay to in 1995? What did the Indian government change the name of Bombay to in 1995? 
Question six. What did the first text sent in the UK on the 3rd of December, it probably should have been a year there, say? Did it say A, hello, B, test, or did it say C, Merry Christmas? But it was in the 90s. <laughs> so, question four. Which Blue Peter presenter was sacked in 1998 over newspaper reports of drug use? Question 5. What did the Indian government change the name of Bombay to in 1995? Question 6. What did the first text sent in the UK on the 3rd of December say? Did it say A. Hello, B. Test or C. Merry Christmas? And let's move on to the last couple of questions on the 1990s. Number 7. Which toy did TV's Blue Peter show viewers how to make due to it selling out in all stores at Christmas 1993? Which toy did TV's Blue Peter show viewers how to make due to it selling out in all stores at Christmas 1993? And question 8. Who aged 15 years and 282 days old became the youngest winner of a Wimbledon senior title in 1996? So, question seven, which toy did TV's Blue Peter show viewers how to make due to it selling out in all stores at Christmas 1993? And number eight, who, aged 15 years and 282 days old, became the youngest winner of a Wimbledon senior title in 1996? Okay. So, let's look at the answers. So, question one, originally founded in 1995, what does E in eBay stand for? It stands for Echo. They were known as Echo Bay Trading. Two, which former footballer claimed to be the son of God in 1991? That was David Icke. Three, Terry Waite was released in November 1991, but how many days had he been held captive? He'd been held captive for an incredible 1,763 days. So if you got anywhere between 1,663 and 1,863, you get the point. So, the answer to question four. Which Blue Peter presenter was sacked? Oh, it seems I've done this wrong. It was Richard Bacon. Which Blue Peter presenter was sacked in 1998 over newspaper reports of drug use? It was Richard Bacon. Now I've got a question. <laughs> An answer for a question with no question. What did the go Indian government change the name of Bombay to in 1995? It was Mumbai. And the answer to the sixth question is Merry Christmas, the first text to be sent in the UK. Will the question ever come up? Yes, it will. There it is. It was C, Merry Christmas. As it was the 3rd of December, that's very strange. And the last two questions, which may come up sometime or may come up when this question has been answered. Which toy did TV's Blue Peter show viewers how to make? It was Thunderbird's Tracy Island. Sold out everywhere. And now we have an answer and no question. It was Martina Hingis, who was the youngest winner of a Wimbledon senior title in 1996. I did proof read all these and still things go wrong and we might have a little bit of buffering problem again okay looks like we're back okay so question seven the answer is Thunderbirds Tracy Island question eight it is Martina Hingis. Well on Robin, three out of eight. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. 
five out of eight. Well done, Eleanor. Any other scores going in chat? So we will move on to round five. Eurovision, everyone's favorite subject. <laughs> Let's see if I've got the questions coming up correctly. So, question one. It will appear anytime soon or not. Um, okay. Okay, we've got question two, which is not much use is it, to anybody. Where did question one go to? Who's been tampering with my slides? Okay, let's get all the questions on. Okay, question one. Which country has won the contest more than any others? Question two. Which country did Celine Dion represent in 1988? Question three. Cliff Richard represented the UK twice. Name of the two songs. So two points, one point for each song. Question four. Which dance show had its premiere as the Interval Show in 1994? Seven out of eight, and not bad, Simon. Okay, sorry about the questions all coming up in funny orders, but let's go through them once more. Which country has won the contest more than any others? Question two, which country did Celine Dion represent in 1988? Uh, question three, Cliff Richard represented the UK twice. Name the two songs. And question four, which dance show had its premiere as the Interval Show in 1994? Okay, and let's expect the questions to be all higgledy piggledy in the next one as well. So I may just put them all on the screen. So. Okay. So, question five. Which song won the special contest in 2005, celebrating 50 years of Eurovision? Question 6. Who sang the 1974 UK entry that came second to ABBA? Where and question 7 is, where was the 1974 competition held in the UK? And 8. Which countries are known as the Big Four? So question five, which song won the special contest in 2005, celebrating 50 years of Eurovision? Um, a small clue it is a previous winner. Six, who sang a 1974 UK entry that came second to ABBA? Question seven, where was the 1974 competition held in the UK? And eight, which countries are known as the big four? Means they don't have to... Uh, take part in the semi-finals and but they pay all the money okay is everybody ready we'll get on with the answers so I'll give you a point each for the countries because I'm feeling generous so let's go on with the answers to the first four and who knows what the slide is going to do oh we've got all the questions that's a good start which country has won the most contests it is ireland i believe they have won seven 
Question two, which country did Celine Dion represent in 1988? She represented Switzerland. Not Canada, because they're not in Europe. Although that doesn't really count anymore. Uh, question three, the two songs were Congratulations and Power to All Our Friends. So one point for Congratulations and one point for Power to All Our Friends. And which dance show had its premiere as the Interval Show in 1994? It was Riverdance. Okay, so answer to one is Ireland, two Switzerland, three congratulations and power to all our friends for two points, and four Riverdance. So... In the other four, which song won the special contest in 2005 celebrating 50 years of Eurovision? It was Waterloo by ABBA. Six, who sang the 1974 UK entry that came second to ABBA? It was Olivia Newton-John. Uh, seven, where was the 1974 competition held? In the UK, it was held in Brighton. And question eight, which countries are known as the big four? It is the UK, Germany, France, and Spain. So. Three, okay, not, you know. You, you know stuff, you don't know stuff. That's uh, what it's all about. Done okay in the last couple of rounds, but, you know. It, <laughs> three might be good. <laughs> Five, Gracie's World, well done. Two, okay. Well, four from Robin, well done, Robin. So, right, let's move on to round six. This is the pitch around. So I will show you 12 football strips. Um, all you need to tell me is which international teams wear that strip. Um, I will give you three or four minutes on each picture. So that is the first six name the international teams that wear those football strips I would say three of these are iconic for those countries and three of them are, yes are not their first team colors at least two of them aren't their first team colours. Okay, anybody need any more time? Or do you know them all or don't know any of them? Have given up? Uh, one more minute on the clock. And then I will show you the next six.
Well, you know, I try to I try to aim the, the quiz at as many different uh, people as possible. I'm sorry if football or sport or is just not something you're interested in, but I'm sure some people would score some points. Okay, let's move on to the next six. We can always come back if anybody needs to have a look. So, two or three minutes on these. Yep, guessing is always a way to go. There are some things on the shirts that if you know flags and countries, um, <laughs> an exercise in guesswork. Well, it could be, or it could be just educated guessing Okay, one more minute, and then we will look at the answers, unless anybody needs more time or needs to go back to the first six. Put it in chat and tell me, and we'll have a quick look. Okay, let's take a look at the answers, shall we? Right. So, one to six. Shirt one is Argentina. So not particularly their first trip, I would say, but that's Argentina. Number two is the Czech Republic. Again, I'm not sure that's the first kit. Number three is Croatia, classic Croatian kit. Number four is Brazil. Number five is Saudi Arabia. Congratulations if you got that. And number six is a classic Denmark kit. So that's the first six. So one, Argentina, two, Czech Republic, three, Croatia, four, Brazil, Five, Saudi Arabia, and six, Holland, classic orange of Holland. And number 12 is Italy. Uh, glitchy. Well, there's not really a lot I can do about it being glitchy. As far as I can see, everything's working okay. Is everybody getting the answers and the questions? As long as that's happening, I am happy. So, 7 is Australia, 8 is Scotland, 9 is Japan, 10 is Mexico, 11 is Holland, and 12 is Italy. Well done, Gracie's World. 6 out of 12 is pretty good. Eleanor, 3 out of 12 solid I'll, uh, if you if you say so um pretty good simon curtis got a six six a seven oh no okay six yep pretty good robbing didn't have a scooby-doo and pretty good pretty good 
I would think. Okay, so we will move on, or not, as the case may be. Okay, frames dropping again. Okay, it looks like we're back. Rob got most of ours. That is very strange. Sorry, we look like we dropped off a bit again there. Uh, but it looks like we're back, so we will get on with the next round quick. Oh no, we won't. We're going to take a break and hopefully come back and everything will be fine. YouTube's not this big stuff. Oh my goodness. Okay, going to take a couple of minutes, hopefully work out what is going on with the stream. And um, grab a drink. See you in a bit.
Okay, um, I'm back, and let's get through these last two rounds before the internet decides to implode, or my computer decides that it doesn't want to do this anymore. And round seven is birds. It is birds, but maybe not as you know it. Okay, so let's get on with the first question. The bomolo fish, salted and dried, is eaten as a relish called what? And keep in mind that the round is about birds. Question two. What is the nickname of Sheffield Wednesday Association Football Club? What is the nickname of Sheffield Wednesday Football Club? Question three. What was Manfred Mann's number one hit of April 1966? One view oldies out there. And question four which will come up sometime or maybe it's not on this slide it's not on this slide oh my goodness it's on the next one so question four what was the title of Arthur Ransom's famous children's book published in 1931 Question 5. What word describes completing a hole in golf three strokes below par? Another sports question. I do apologise. What word describes completing a hole in golf three strokes below par? And question 6. Which fruit's alternative name is the Chinese gooseberry? So, remember, these are all to do with birds. What was the title of Arthur Ransom's famous children's book, published in 1931? What word describes completing a hole in golf three strokes below par? And the last one, which fruit's alternative name is the Chinese gooseberry? Okay, so the last two questions. Question 7. What steam locomotive broke the speed record at 126 miles per hour? in 1938. Question 8. In the famous Monty Python parrot sketch, what breed of parrot had John Cleese supposedly been sold? Was it A. An African Grey, B. A Norwegian Blue, C. A Danish Red, or D. A Swedish Yellow? So what parrot was John Cleese supposedly sold? An African grey, a Norwegian blue, a Danish red, or a Swedish yellow? So seven. What steam locomotive broke the speed record at 126 miles per hour in 1938? And eight. In the famous Monty Python parrot sketch, what breed of parrot had John Cleese supposedly been sold? Was it A, the African grey, B, the Norwegian blue, C, the Danish red, or D, the Swedish yellow. Okay, let's take a look at the answers on the birds round. How many of these birds, not birds, questions did you get? So, question one. The bumalo fish, salted and dried, is eaten as a relish called what? It is eaten, it is called Bombay duck. Question two. What is the nickname of Sheffield Wednesday AFC? They are the Owls. Question three. What was Man from Man's number one hit of April 1966? It was Pretty Flamingo. So answer to one is Bombay Duck. Answer to two is Owls. Answer to three is Pretty Flamingo. Question 4. What was the title of Arthur Ransom's famous children's book published in 1931? 
It was swallows and Amazons. 5. What word describes completing a hole in golf three strokes below par? It is an albatross. And question 6. Which fruit's alternative name is the Chinese gooseberry? That is a kiwi fruit. So 4 is swallows and Amazons, 5 albatross, 6 kiwi fruit. Question 7. What steam locomotive broke the speed record at 126 miles an hour in 1939? Oh, 38. It was the Mallard. And the parrot that John Cleese supposedly had been sold was a Norwegian blue. It was B. Norwegian blue. So the answer to number 7 is the Mallard. And the answer to number 8 is B. The Norwegian blue. It is a non parrot Okay, so how many did you score on the bird? Four out of eight forgot Vietnam existed. Oh dear. Four's not too bad, not too shabby. Any more scores? Six, congratulations, that's a great score. Zero, I have brought shame to my bird for a related name. <laughs> yes, somebody with the sending swift should have done much better in the bird's round. Gracie's world, two out of eight. Oh dear. Okay, so last but not least, we have space travel. So, how much do you know about what goes on in space? It might not help you in this round, but we'll see. So, question one. What record, released in 1969, became a number one in 1975, Concerned the space flight of Major Tom. Number two, who wrote the 1865 novel From the Earth to the Moon? Question three, in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, what is the name of the talking computer? Like I said, maybe doing a lot about space won't help you. Or maybe it will. So, question one. What record, released in 1969, became a number one in 1975, concerned the space flight of Major Tom? Two, who wrote the 1965, 1865 novel, sorry, From the Earth to the Moon? And three, in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, what is the name of the talking computer? Right, on to the next set of questions. Question four, what approximately is the furthest distance from Earth that astronauts have yet travelled? Is it A, 100,000, B, 250,000? C, 500,000, or D, 1 million miles. 5. What was the name of the first dog in space? Question 6. What was the appropriately named company for which Britain's first cosmonaut, Helen Sharman, worked? So let's go through those again. Question four. What approximately is the furthest distance from Earth that astronauts have travelled? Is it A, 100,000 miles, 250,000 miles, 500,000 miles, or 1 million miles? Question five. What was the name of the first dog in space? And question six. What was the appropriately named company for which Britain's first cosmonaut, Helen Sherman, worked? So 
So, last two questions of the quiz. Question seven, what was the name of the US communications satellite that in 1962 inspired the tornado's number one hit record? And question eight, what was the name of the first US manned space program? Was it A, Discovery, B, Challenger, C, Apollo, or D, Mercury? So question seven, what was the name of the US communications satellite that in 1962 inspired the tornado's number one hit record? And number eight, what was the name of the first US manned space program? Was it A, Discovery, B, Challenger, C, Apollo, or D, Mercury? Okay, so let's go and look at the answers to the space round. What record released in 1969 became a number one in 1975 concerned the space flight of Major Tom? It was David Bowie's Space Oddity. Um, in number two, who wrote the 19, 1865 novel From the Earth to the Moon? It was Jules Verne. Three, in the film 2001 Space Odyssey, what is the name of the talking computer? His name is Hal. So, answer number one is David Bowie's Space Oddity. Two is Jules Verne. And three is Hal. Answers to four, five, and six. What approximately is the furthest distance travelled by an astronaut? It is 250,000 miles. B, 250,000. Five, what was the name of the first dog in space? Her name was Laika. Or Laika, Laika. Six, what was the appropriately named company for which Britain's first cosmonaut, Helen Sharman, worked? She worked for Mars. And the final two questions of the quiz. What was the name of the US communications, telecommunications satellite? It was Telstar. I have no, I have no idea what the tornado's number one hit record was titled, but I'm sure it had Telstar in the title. And eight, what was the name of the first US manned space program? It was D, Mercury. Discovery and Challenger with a shuttle. Um, and Apollo was part of the uh, moon landings. So, yes, it was D, Mercury. So, throw your scores for the round in the chat. Throw your scores for the whole quiz in the chat. And thank you all for playing. Seems to be a little bit harder than normal this week. But we had some decent scores. 7 out of 8 is a great score on that round. Um, congratulations. 3 out of 8. Not too bad. Also if you want, put, yeah, like I said, put your scores for the whole thing in there if you dare 34 not too bad Ellie so thank you 1 out of 8 I'm in a galaxy far away from doing nice one Paul at least you uh, decided to tell us how bad you are doing um, thanks for playing like I said if you can find time to donate a little bit of money to board in the city that would be great and if um, we aren't fully out of lockdown in two weeks which we probably won't be uh, we may be back in two weeks time um, so thank you again for playing and good night